But it's one thing you can be. You can be the best mother. You can be the best mother you can be. And that's all that heaven requires. Don't let these people make you think because you don't sit behind a desk with your name on a tablet, on a little thing, that your life is worthless. If you've been involved in God's kingdom and you have become a mother, esteem that calling greater than anything. I'm going to say this and say down though. See, my problem today is most, a lot of women don't esteem being a great mother. There's nothing in his life. Man, when his life is over, all that stuff you've been shooting for ain't, ain't going to be that. You, we need to understand and take it real serious. You know what God does? He's so good to us. He gives us our headaches called kids. <laughs> yeah, he'll give, you, he'll give you your kids, but, but you know what? They're not yours. He lets you use them. Man, I see people, they'll clean up everything and, and take care of everything, but the kids, take care of those kids. Tell me yours. That's the only thing that's yours. Don't you let nobody tell you that motherhood is crazy. Man, I wouldn't have no kids. I'm having a good time. That's why you're going to die by yourself, though. Thank God for y'all. I am so happy for you. And I got other motives for being happy for you being the mother, because I'm glad I ain't. Right, that's not to put you down. I'm, I wouldn't cut out to be one. I ain't even trying. I'll be honest with you, I don't have no desire to ever even think about being a woman. I better quit. Anyway. Tracy. Would you please come on? You come on up. You could have went up anytime you want to. I, I, we, here, here, I know a lot of people wonder. I, I never sit up here. I don't care who sit up here. It's, your, it's on you. I, I'm going to play music. I'm going to worship and sing. I'm going to do all that. I don't care about all that, but I'm just so honored to have her. And one other thing before all you mothers leave, I do have a little token. I would tell you it costs a lot of money, but some people put some love and some stuff going to give you and make sure you have something that you was recognized today. So all the mothers, before you leave now, I'm going to try to meet you back at the back door. No, you won't be able to cash there, nor take it to the pawn shop. Before you get all excited, I want you to start thinking, oh, man. No. <laughs> no, you will not be able to sell it, probably. But I can tell you what was done with love. And if you can receive that, that's fine. But I want you to know somebody was thinking about you. If nobody else was, we were. And want to make sure before you leave that you take something from here that says, you know, today was Mother's Day and somebody thought about me. And so with that, Sister Tracy, I want you to just come. I'm scared of this place right now. Praise the Lord, everybody. Yes, Lord. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Yes, God, to all our mothers in the house on today. Yes, God, first I want to give honor to the Lord for being the head of my life, uh, to the angel of this house, um, Bishop Wilson. Uh, to my own pastor, Pastor Maybon, uh, to First Lady Maybon, to my own husband, to everybody in their respectful places. Truly, I thank and I praise God. Um, one thing when you know that you have a charge on your life, when you're not doing the charge, it bothers you. Yes, God. When you're used to doing what God has called you to do, and sometimes God has allowed a time where you're not doing it to confirm what he has called you to do. So truly, I thank and I praise God. This is an honor. Yes, God, I don't take this lightly. Yes, Lord, I thank you, Bishop Wilson. 
Yes, God, I thank you. Yes, God, if you have your Bibles on this morning, we're going to the book of Job. And I'm going to read three scriptures from Job. Uh, first Job, second chapter of Job, and the third chapter of Job. Yes, God, and when you have your Bibles, please say amen. Yes, God. I'm going to read Job chapter, did I say one? Yeah, it is one. Job chapter one, verse 20. It says, then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped and said, naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked I shall return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job said not, nor charged God foolishly. We're going to skip over in chapter 2. And we're going to read verse 9. Job chapter 2, verse 9. It says, Then said his wife unto him, Do if thy refrain, retain thy in integrity, curse God and die. Then we're going to skip over to Job chapter 3. First verse. After this, Job opened his mouth and cursed his day. And Job spoke and said, Let the day perish wherein I was born. And the night in which it was said, there is a man child conceived. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Oh, hallelujah, God, we come before you, Lord God, on today, oh God. Oh, hallelujah, God, I'm asking, Lord God, that you would allow me, Lord God. Oh, hallelujah, God, to decrease in my flesh, oh God. Oh, hallelujah, God, they don't need to hear Tracy on today, oh God. Oh, hallelujah, God, but they need to hear a word from you, oh God. Oh, hallelujah, God, I'm asking, Lord God, that you would send the word for the hour, oh God. Oh God, let your word be effective, oh God. Oh God, I'm asking, Lord God, that you would send it out, God. Oh God, that it would not return it to your void, oh God. Oh God, I'm asking, Lord God, that you put this charge in my hand, oh God. Oh God, let me be a good stewardess over your word on this morning, oh God. Oh God, don't let me say anything in Tracy, oh God. Oh God, but let you speak, God. Oh God, if you don't speak, I can't speak, God. Oh God, if you don't open up my mouth, oh God. Oh God, it will cling to the top of my mouth, oh God. Oh God, but I'm asking, oh God, that you will use this empty vessel, oh God. Oh God, fill me up, God, with your word, oh God. Oh God, fill me up, God. Oh, God, as this word, God, comes to me first, God. Oh, God, before I can ever deliver it, God. Oh, God, that you will get the glory, God. That you will get the praise, God. That you will be lifted up, God. Oh, God, and we thank you in advance, God. That your word will be effective over today, oh, God. Oh, God, that your word will deliver on today, God. Oh, God, that your word will set the captive free on today, God. Oh, God, that your word will bring men to a heart of repentance on today, God. Oh, God, and we thank you in advance, God, in Jesus' name, oh, God. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Yes, Lord, I began to study on Job. And one thing I learned about Job was his integrity. And I'm just going to give you a little background on the book of Job. Because we hear so many, we hear about Job being this strong person that endured everything that came up against him. But there was a time in Job's life where he got discouraged. And he felt that, guess what, I cursed the day that I died. But as we read in the first chapter how 
when things happened in his life, how he began to still yet give God the praise. And we know that when we first come on the Lord's side, and when we first get saved, we're excited about God. And can't nobody do us no harm. And guess what? It don't matter what happens in our life. We're still able to withstand the wiles of the enemy. But as we walk it in this walk, sometimes we get comfortable. Sometimes we get complacent. Sometimes our determination is not the same. Our consistency is not the same. Our discipline is not the same. And the enemy begins to ask God for permission. See, what we have to realize that the things that come up in our life, the enemy has to ask God for permission. So don't get weary. Don't get discouraged. When the enemy begins to touch things in your life, when the enemy begins to touch your walk with God, when the enemy begins to test your relationship, your marriage, your job, your finance, don't get weary. Because he had to get permission from God. It taking us by surprise. But it doesn't take God by surprise. Now, the book of Job was written by Moses. Job was from the land of us. He was a prosperous farmer. The book of Job was the first of the poetic books and is the oldest book in the Bible. That is not a book about suffering, but it relates to the overall plan of, uh, for God, for mankind. When we begin to read the book of Job, so many times we talk about his suffering. But how many times do we really relate on him standing for God in the midst of his suffering? How many times do we dig in and say, you know what, Job got discouraged. Because I'm pretty sure in his first test, he was tested two times. And the first time when the Son of Man came before God, Satan came as well. When we come before God, Satan comes as well. When we come in the house of God, Satan comes as well. When we down on our knees praying, Satan comes down as well. And God said, what did I do it? He said, I'm going to and fro in the earth. His sin. Who can, I, who can I test? And the Lord asked Satan for permission. Have thy considered my servant Job? He's an upright man. A man that is sued evil, meaning refrained from evil. Job was the type of man, he went to God praying for his family that they may have sinned against God. So he stood in the gap for them even if they thought sin. Job went before God for them on their behalf. So he said, have you considered my servant Job? He's this, he's that. He's this, he's that. And Satan said, you know what? You got a hedge around him. I can't touch him. You need to move back and let me test him. But see, God knew that Job was going to be able to withstand now, how many of us can say, Job had seven sons and three daughters? How many of us can say, as we're, how many of us can say, as we're sitting down in our house, if somebody come and knock on your door and say, guess what, an earthquake happened and your whole family was destroyed, that we can still stand up and say, blessed be the name of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all. How many of us can stand up and say that we can still give God praise? Or will we tuck tail and run? But Job stood. He stood. And he said, guess what? Blessed be the name of the Lord. The good Lord give it. And the good Lord take it away. So guess what? Job passed that test. He passed that test. But guess what? The enemy was not done. And a lot of times we pass a test. But guess what? The enemy is coming back at you. As long as you in this flesh, you're going to always be tested by Satan. I don't care if you're a bishop. I don't care if you're a pastor. The Bible says in this flesh dwells no good thing. So as long as you're in this flesh, the enemy is asking for permission. 
When we think we got it all together, the enemy's asking permission. When we think we shout on the house top, the enemy's asking permission. When we think we holy than anybody else, the enemy's asking permission. When we think we would have dotted every I and crossed every T, the enemy's asking permission. When you think you open up the church doors, you lock them, the enemy's asking permission. But one thing you have to realize, the enemy has to ask permission. He can't do anything without God's permission in your life. And guess what? If you can only stand in the midst of what you're going through and recognize that God gave him permission, God didn't give the enemy permission to tempt Satan because he knew Satan, I mean, Job, because he knew Job, Job would fall. But he knew that Job could withstand. God knows that you can withstand. He knows that you can withstand. He knows that you can withstand. He knows that you can withstand. Nothing's been hurt but our flesh. That's right. Because it ain't going dust, it's going back to. Mm. Ain't nothing being buffed but your flesh. Yes. And if you're going to be, ever be anything in God, you're going to have to go through. Come on, yeah. If you're going to ever be anything in God, God is going to have to build your character. And building your character is through many tears, through many hurts. God is going to build your character, but you have to allow him. So guess what Job said, okay, you had my family, you took my sons, my daughter, and his wife came to him. Now can you imagine the one that you love, and guess what, his wife didn't have that relationship with God like Job did. Because guess what, I can imagine her being the mother, today is Mother Day like Bishop uh, Wilson was saying how us mothers, we, we have to endure a lot. But can you imagine that mother getting the report that all, set, all 10 of her kids were gone? Can you imagine going and saying, honey, all the kids are dead. Why are you serving God? Why? Just tell me why. Why are you still going to church? Why are you still praying? Why are you still trusting in this God? Why would he allow my kids to be destroyed like that? Why did he take all of them? And that's what we do. We begin to question God. When God touched the little things in our life, our finances, our marriages, our cars, our homes, we begin to question God. God, if you love me, why you do that? Why you allow that? Why you take my loved one? Why you take my job? Why you take? And he said, because I love you. And I'm trying to build your character. I'm trying to mold you and make you after my own will. And if I don't take that from you, you will never be the person that God wants you to be. If I don't buff that thing in your life, you will never be the person that God wants you to be. You will never get the anointing that God wants you to have. There's a price for anointing. This ain't nothing you can buy at Walmart. It comes through pain and suffering. But guess what? The enemy said, oh yeah. So yeah, Job's still hanging with you, God. And guess what? That's what the enemy said to some of us. He's going to God, oh yeah. Sister, your court is still coming, huh? First lady, she's still, yeah. Look at Deacon William, look, look. They still, look, look what's going on in their life. I bet you won't let me touch their skin. Because guess what? In the first test, the Lord told Satan, just don't touch his body. You can touch everything. Don't touch him physically. Don't touch him. But see, one thing about God, he knew that Job was going to steal. See, at the first test, Job wasn't ready for his flesh to be buffed. In your first test, guess what? You weren't ready. So he couldn't allow that to happen because you would have failed. You weren't ready. But when God got Job ready, when <coughs> Job lost his family, that pushed him closer to God. When we go through things in God, it should press us closer unto the Lord. It shouldn't push us back, but it should bring us closer on our face. Turning over more plates, crying out to God, turning over our plates. It should push us in the place that God needs us to be. The first time Job wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. He wasn't ready for his flesh to be touched. 
But how God said, okay, now I done allowed all this to happen. And Job still stands. So he said, now let me touch him skin to skin. Meaning, let me touch his flesh. Let me touch his physical body. And I bet you he'll curse you to your face. And God said, no, go ahead. And how he allowed bulls from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. And how he took some and was scraping himself. We get a paper cut and guess what? We about ready to die. But the bulls covered him from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. And guess what? He was in pain and agony. But he still stood for God. A lot of times we're going through pain and agony. But we can still stand for God. We can withstand from God. No matter what comes and goes in our life, you can stand for God. You can live saved. You can hang in there. Because everything in this world is temporarily anyway. One day it's going to be gone anyway. And how Job's body was from head to toe. <coughs> Much pain. And how he had three friends. They got a report of, hey, did you hear what was going on with Job? Yeah, I heard he lost his kids and, yeah, his farm land, his animals, some else. Oh, yeah. He got boils from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. What's going on with Job? So they made an appointment to go see about him. And how when they got there, they seen him afar off. But they didn't recognize who he was because he was just that disfigured. See, guess what? When God begins to wipe the mess out of your life, they're not going to recognize who you are because of the anointing that's going to be on your life. You're not going to look like what you've been through. Guess what? But Job still said, blessed be the name of the Lord, as they walked up and he sat there quietly. Now, Jewish tradition states that when someone is mourning, you're not supposed to speak to them until they speak to you. So they laid there seven days and seven nights just watching Job, just watching him in pain and just laying there. Now these three men was men of wisdom, so they was going to check on him, but they also were supposed to have wisdom. But they began to watch Job. And finally, after the seventh day, Job said something. He said something. Can you imagine to see somebody in that much pain in seven days, they don't say anything. They're not asking for medication. They're not asking, can you take me to the hospital? They're not asking for water, but they just endured it. He just laid there and endured the pain. Laid there and talked to Jesus. Laid there and began to confirm his relationship with the Lord. Laid there and began to tell the Lord, Lord, I want to live for you. I don't want to turn back now. God, this is too much for me to bear, but if you can keep me, I want to be kept. And how Job began to talk to his friends. But guess what his friends said? You need to repent. You done done something. See, that's what the enemy does. He's the accuser of the brethren. Guess what? When something happened in our life and it's negative, first thing the enemy tells people, you done did something to cause that. It's something you done did, Job, and you need to repent of your sins. You need to repent right now, Job, to get this over with. And the Lord rebuked him because Job was beginning to complain. He began to curse the day that he was born and curse the day that he was born and curse the day that he was born. And his friends said, well, just repent. Just ask God to forgive you of your sins. And God rebuked Job and his three friends. And he told them, no, sin didn't cause this. This is for Job's making. This ain't got nothing to do with sin. You guys talking foolish right now. Yeah, you had wisdom when you came, but you're talking foolish right now. And Job began to just begin to bless the Lord. But he never gave up on God. He never turned his back on God. And that's what God is wanting us to do. 
When different things come up in our life, because they're coming. If you're going to live for God, you're going to go through something. Only way you don't go through nothing if you don't surrender to God. But if you're going to live a surrendered life before God, you're going to go through. He suffered. You're a child of his. You're going to suffer. But guess what? You can withstand. You can stand. You can stand. You may say, if this happened, I don't think I can serve God. Yes, you can. Some of us going through some things right now in our life. And I thank God for the last song that says, don't give up. Don't give up. I want to encourage you, don't give up. Job was the prime example that you can withstand. You can stand what you're going through. Nothing's going through but your flesh. The flesh is being buffed. But God is building your character through that. God wants you to go through something other to be something. Some of us have so many calls upon our life. We're not answering the call of God because we don't want to go through anything. With something going on in our life, we take our running. But guess what? One thing I want to tell you, you're going to do the work of God. But don't allow God to have to put you on your back or afflict your body before you say yes, say yes. Because many are called, few are chosen. Some of us are chosen by God, but we're not doing the work of God. We're delaying it with our own excuses. I'm not ready. You're not going to never be ready. I stuttered, well, hey, God can still use you. I don't have time. Well, we, you don't have to make time. God will move your schedule if he need to. God will move your schedule and make time. But don't allow God to have to afflict you for to get a yes out of you. It's a privilege and the honor if God even allow you to open up your mouth to say Jesus. That's a privilege and the honor. If God allow you to do anything for him, it's a privilege and it's the honor. Let's have the spirit of Job. Let's take on the spirit of Job. If this calls me my life, I want to make it to the city. If my mother don't go, I want to make it to the city. If my father don't go, I want to make it to the city. See, one thing about this relationship with God, it has to be personal. It has to be personal. It can't be predicated upon nobody but you and God. It can't be. Because God will call you to do some strange things that guess what? Nobody else may not understand. Look at your wife. Curse him. You might as well curse God and die. Imagine if Job was so connected to her that he surrendered to her and didn't hang in there with God. But he said, hey, you talk foolish. Bye. He was taking a chance of her walking out of his life forever. But he was going to stay with God. He didn't care. He didn't try to compromise with her. He didn't try to justify how she felt. He didn't say, oh, baby, I know the kids are gone, and I understand how you feel, and, but God has been good. He didn't even try to encourage her. He said, hey, I don't need to hear that right now. And sometimes you have to close your ears to negativity because even though he loved his wife at that time, he had to mute her out. He said, hey, you talk like a foolish woman. Okay, so basically go ahead on. But I want to encourage you in my closing. Be the men and women that God wants you to be. You only get one chance at life. And only what you do for Christ is going to last. You may feel that, hey, I'm too young. No, you're not. I did everything I wanted to do in my life, so it doesn't matter. I ain't did all the negative stuff that I felt I wanted to do. it. And when I get myself together, you would never be able to get yourself together. Because if you had power to get yourself together, there would be no need for God. You would never be able to get yourself together. So don't even try to get yourself together. But let God do it. God is not looking for you to be perfect. 
He just wants you to surrender. He's not looking for you to come in here with dot every I and cross every T. Guess what? Everybody in here still have something in their life that they're struggling with. Because guess what? When you reach perfection, guess what? You're going to be laid out before here. He's going to come and get you. But why are you here? Let God use the best days out of your life. Don't wait till you're old and you can't do nothing but sit on the pews. But let God use you while you're young. That he can sit back and say, look at my daughter. Look at my son. They make me so proud. At this time, the altars are open. If you would like to come up and say, you know what? I do want a closer relationship with the Lord. Because every day, I don't care how long you've been saved, you still should desire a closer relationship with God. Or Lord, I'm just, I'm struggling with some things. But if you will help me in this area, I'll begin to take those steps towards you. Or I will continue to hold your hand. See, sometimes we just need God to help us a little bit. Lord, this is the area of my life that I struggle in. But if you will help me, I'll continue to walk. I can't walk without you. I can't talk without you. I can't live without you. I can't breathe without you. I have no beings without you. And we have to tell God that. My life is void without you. My life is not even worth living without you, God. But if you... Help me, I'll do it. If you strengthen me, I'll do it. If you lead me, God, I'll follow. If you hold my hand, God, I'll continue to walk. I'm not going to stop walking, God. But I need your help, God. And it's okay to tell God you need his help. We tell our boss that we need their help when we don't understand something. But we have to tell God, Lord, I, I need your help. Hold my hand, God. 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 God, hold my hand. Hold my hand, God. Hold my hand. Hold my hand, God. Oh, God, order my steps according to your will, oh, God. Oh, God, teach me how to walk, God. Oh, hallelujah, God, teach me how to talk, oh, God. Oh, hallelujah, God, teach me how to love the way that you love, oh, God. Oh, hallelujah, God, I don't know how to do it the way that you do it, oh, God. Oh, hallelujah, God, but I'm asking for your strength, oh, God. Oh, God, I'm asking for your ability, oh, God. Oh, God, wrap your arms around me, oh, God. Oh, God, encourage me, oh, God. Oh, hallelujah, God, I'm nothing without you, oh, God. Oh, God, I'm like a ship without a sail, oh, God. I'm like a river without water, oh, God. Oh, hallelujah, God, you're the apple of my eyes, oh, God. Oh, hallelujah, God, you're righteous, oh, God, you're holy, God. Oh, God, you're eternal, oh, God. Oh, hallelujah, God, and we need you, oh, God. Oh, God, we need you, oh, God. We need you, oh, God. Oh, hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Yes, God, hallelujah, God. Not an hour, another day. Lord, I stand here with my arms outstretched. 